What's going on guys, it's Omni York and today I'm bringing you a brand new video where I'm going to be giving you my guide to Edward in Rise of Kingdoms. Edward of Woodstock, the Black Prince. Guys, this is episode 9, which means it's been a while since the beginning of this series. And I just want to remind you guys how this list was created, right? Because I've seen a couple of comments here and there, people talking about, oh man, you only have them at 2000. How could you possibly? Guys, I've played this game for over 800, what is it, 880 days? And, and you would think by now I would know where that's listed. 881 days of consecutive logins, okay? So this list was actually uh, built not just by myself uh, it was primarily built with you know with my experience in the game fighting these commanders in the open field and tons of kvks and things like that but also i used uh, i kind of crowdsourced a little bit of uh, a small pool of players that i think are actually better than me at the game uh, i kind of pulled them on what they think about these commanders in all of these categories and i compiled all that data ran it through my filter of experience and that's how we got this list so just because i have edward at two zero 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 doesn't mean that i I can't tell you whether or not he's a good investment because just like in any other strategy game you can actually read what the commander does i know i know crazy crazy concept it's almost like you can understand things just by reading them weird anyway before we jump into the guide i just want to remind you guys there is a written guide for edward of woodstock over on my website riseofkingdoms.org go ahead and check that out if you don't want to watch this entire video or if you want a recap of the talent builds that i share with you in this video and a quick reminder to subscribe to the channel because 75 percent of you guys are not subscribed so go ahead and click that button if you want to i know you might not want to but go ahead and do it right just so you know and again there's actually a surprise that's going to go up on this wall i got the notification today this morning that it started shipping from China so I am excited for the awesome thing that's gonna be going up behind me so you guys want to subscribe turn on those notifications with the bell so you don't miss it right you don't miss it. it's gonna be cool okay Edward of Woodstock is an archer versatility skill based legendary commander here in rise of kingdoms you actually get Edward from the wheel of fortune he's gonna show up in your kingdom on day 262 you can also use your universal commander sculptures to convert into Edward you also can get him from the card King event you also can get him from these daily special bundles over here depending on the age of your kingdom you can go ahead and straight up purchase him in those bundles now it's also worth noting that at the time of recording this video we do know that they are changing the way that the wheel of fortune works you'll probably be able to pick three commanders instead of one which may adjust the timing of how, when edward comes into the game but regardless you'll probably see him first on the wheel okay so what we need to know is is he actually worth investing in right if he shows up on the wheel should you spend your gems on him should you buy him in that daily bundle well let's go ahead and talk about it so first what we're going to do is we're going to go over his skills so you guys have an idea as to what exactly edward is doing so his primary skill is called archer's honor it has a rage requirement of 1350 so very high rage requirement here it has a direct damage factor of 2500 when edward is the primary commander or 1250 when he's the secondary commander so really powerful stuff here you definitely want him as your primary and when an active skill goes off troops led by this commander lose 300 rage but it won't go below zero so really powerful single target damage factor insane right insane his second skill gives you 30 percent of archer health and 30 percent of archer march speed this is really interesting here tons of archer health which is really really nice and they're going to be really fast across the battlefield his third skill when his army consists of only archers he's going to deal 25 percent extra skill damage on top of what he's he's already dealing huge skill damage he's going to do 25 percent more if it's only archers in his army and you're going to deal five percent extra damage to infantry units his fourth skill will give you 40 percent archer attack but reduce your defense by 10 percent so long as your army is above 70 percent of units remaining and finally his expertise will give you 50 percent more damage for normal attacks and counter attacks for two seconds after using an active skill with the skills out of the way let's talk about talent builds and i actually only have a single talent build here 
for Edward of Woodstock and you can see it on the screen now this is the talent build that you want to use when you're open field fighting when you're leading rallies and even when you're using Edward in your Canyon team this is gonna be the best build and the reason for that is because one the versatility tree is completely useless roughly speaking right it's just not a great tree at all so that only leaves you with these two and really what you want with Edward is the most amount of rage and skill damage as possible because that is where he deals tons of damage which is why we come all the way over here and fill out the skill tree now of course we don't get the bonus points for additional skill damage because there is none here on Edward so you can save those points there we do go up to venomous sting for the additional skill damage we come over here uh, I think this is called razor sharp and we also have full quiver here on the other side this is going to give you the best of both worlds we put the last point right here in rapid fire now it's worth noting here that Edward comes out at the same time as Tamiris and we made a video about her you can check that out on the channel but to Tamiris actually shines as an archer in the secondary slot uh, and it she shines incredibly well with Edward because her poison debuff that she applies forces the target to take an additional 3% extra skill damage which stacks up to 15 times so that target can be taking up to 45% extra skill damage by the time that Edward hits them with his absolutely massive primary skill nuke and this is why you constantly see these two paired together especially in kvk season 2. Now with all that out of the way, let's actually break down Edward for each of the respective categories to see where exactly he stacks up as an investment, right? That's important to remember that this guide series is for your investment. Is this a good investment for your sculptures? If you're a regular player, low spender, free to play player, etc. So the first category is open field fighting and Edward actually does pretty well here. He does pretty well in the open field. Um, he does have, again, single target damage factor is where he shines, boosts the skill damage he's going to be probably paired with Tamiris I love that he brings the 30% of extra archer health because again health is is pretty uh scarce for archers and the march speed means he's going to go around the open field pretty fast which is incredible the downside of Edward is that he's kind of outclassed in the mid to late game right you know when Ramses comes out like that's pretty much it and even before that like once you see Attila Takeda you don't really see that many Edward rallies unless you really really need an archer rally for some reason um and because of that Edward actually gets a B for the open field category he's fine he's good but we don't really see any you know AOE or debuffs or anything like that not too much support here on Edward so he's an absolute monster at dealing damage to one target and he's mobile on the battlefield which is great but he is lacking in a couple of areas which is why he lands that B now the next two categories are rallying objectives and rallying cities now if you guys didn't see when my city got rallied in kvk season 2 definitely go and check that video on my channel i get rallied by an edward and it does absolutely crazy amounts of damage to my city so make sure you check that out but edward is actually really good at rallying cities and again it's because when you're hitting a city or you're hitting a flag you're hitting a single target that's where in open field you want aoe when you're rallying you want typically single target damage factor and Edward absolutely shines in this category in both of these categories he's a very powerful archer rally lead however he still suffers from sort of the same things that we see when you know Ramses comes into the game you're really going to be rallying with Ramses most of the time he's just a little bit of a better version of Edward he just gives you more archer stats he doesn't have that huge powerful nuke but he just brings a lot more to the table and of course we eventually get Nebu and Cyrus and you know once we start to get into those late game commanders it just be, it becomes really hard to recommend rallying with Edward so again Edward really shines in series uh, season two um, of KVK and he's still a monster for hitting cities honestly like he just does a ton of damage but eventually he's outclassed and because of that he actually gets an A for both of these categories again very good this is the category that he performs the best in but there are just there's just legendaries that outperform him for this role the next two categories are defending objectives and defending cities and it should kind of go without saying that Edward doesn't really have a place here right Artemisia is going to be the commander that you use if you want to defend a flag with archers um, Edward just doesn't really come 
cut it, right? He doesn't really cut it. He's got a really high rage cost. He has like no AOE to support, uh, you know, the open field around that flag. There's no garrison tree here. There's just, there's just not a really good reason to have Edward in your, in your, in your uh, city garrison, right? It's just, or in a flag even, it doesn't really make that much sense because of that. Edward gets a D for both of these categories. Next up is Canyon performance and Edward performs pretty much the same here as he does in the open field. Not much really changes with Edward in the open field versus Canyon, because again, he's just dealing single target damage factor, whether you get to control where that goes or not, it doesn't make a huge difference. He's still going to just chunk things down one March at a time. And because of that, Edward pretty much again, performs the same in Canyon as he would in the open field. And because of that, he gets a B now he's not exactly, you know, the best in Canyon. He does have that high rage requirement, right? Which is not that great, but you do see a lot of infantry in the Canyon builds of top players. And because of that, having a powerful archer in there to counter that is really, really useful. So Edward, he's decent in, in Canyon, right? You sometimes see him. If a player has invested in him, you might as well throw him into the Canyon team. He's not an absolutely must have in your Canyon build. And because of that, he just gets a B. And the final category is PVE content, right? PVE content, killing barbs, rallying forts, things along those lines. And, you know, you may sometimes see an Edward rallying certain objectives, maybe in like, maybe the fortress in some of the KVKs and the earlier KVKs, right? Um, there's some room to sort of use Edward for PVE content. I mean, the best thing about him for PVE is that uh, he has the 30% march speed, which means you're just going to go around to barbs really, really fast. He's going to kill them, you know, Know, single target he's going to deal a ton of damage um he's fine for killing barbs right he is fine um but the problem is you know there's just there's no peacekeeping tree there's no extra experience there's not there's nothing there's no aoe right um so there's still a lot to be desired for edward but the fact that he's so fast on the battlefield is nice and again there may be some instances where you want to rally with him so because of that edward actually gets a b for the barbs and forts category now before we move to the overall ranking i do just want to let you guys know how important it is if you are rallying with Edward, whether it's PVE content or actual real rallies, which is where you're mostly going to be using him, uh, you want to make sure that it is Archer only. It has to be Archer only. If somebody messes up and they put cavalry in that rally or infantry in that rally or God forbid siege, it will ruin the rally right now. Ruin is a strong word, but you will immediately lose the 25% extra skill damage bonus. You will, which is devastating, right? Because this is a huge, huge, huge amount of skill damage bonus. And this could be deleted in a second if somebody brings the wrong troops. So again, if you're going to be a rally lead with Edward, you have to be very vigilant with what you put in that rally. And with all that being said, let's talk about the final tier rank for Edward. And given everything that we've talked about here, we've seen B's, A's, D's, B's. Overall, Edward, in my opinion, is a B ranked legendary commander as far as investments go, right? He's not the worst investment ever. He does have some really nice roles in KVK2, but after that, he really kind of falls off, right? And, you know, he's still a powerful archer rally captain, but the problem is he's just outclassed when Ramses comes into the game. It's just, it, it there's really no reason to use Edward once you can get Ra Ramses, right? You just, there's just no reason for it. He's decent with open field. He's decent in Canyon. He's decent at rallying objectives kind of shines there for a minute. Uh, but besides that, you know, I, I just don't know if he deserves anything more than that B ranking, even though he is incredible in season two of KBK. So if you're a free to play player or a low spender, Edward's probably not somewhere that I would start investing my universal legendary commander sculptures based on everything that we've talked about. With that being said, guys, if you enjoyed this video, if you found it useful or informative or anything like that, make sure you drop a thumbs up on it. It really does help out the channel a ton. And as I mentioned before, make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that bell to be notified the next time that I upload a Rise of Kingdoms video. As always, my social media links are in the description below, so make sure you follow me over there on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Discord. Everything is always in the description below, and there's also a link in the description to download Rise of Kingdoms absolutely for free for your PC or your Mac, which is my favorite way to play Rise of Kingdoms. It's a program called Blue Stacks, and it provides you a really nice advantage by playing the game on a bigger screen, so when you're doing those big open field fights in KVK or even in Ark, it just, it's nice to be able to see it on a larger display. Like I said, it's free. Click the link and give it a try. With that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been Omniarch. I will talk to you guys again soon. Peace.